Every week, Master Chef Konstantin Druzhinin gathers the most interesting recipes from all the regions of Kazakhstan for you in the culinary tour program. He finds the best food products in different areas of this amazing country. He cooks unique dishes filled with a rich history, national color, and a fragrance of the vast step. Watch the Culinary Tour educational and entertaining cooking show on Kazakh TV weekly. Watch in today's Culinary Tour program. Borabai Village is a gem of Kazakhstan. Chengiz Khan's favorite dish. Autumn Fresh Mushroom Salad The north of Kazakhstan is different from the other regions of the country. First, it refers to the environment and climate. There are a lot of birch groves, coniferous forests, lakes, rivers and fashionable architecture here. I'm in Astana, the capital city of Kazakhstan. Astana once called Tsalinagrad and after that Akmola became the capital in 1998. Since then everything has changed for the residents of this simple city. Astana grew rapidly. Over a million of residents live in the capital this year. There are ultra-modern buildings, wonderful apartment complexes, business centers and expensive cars everywhere. The climate is extreme continental with hot and dry summer and long freezing winter. The favorite recreation area of capital residence is Burabai village, previously it was called Borovoya. It is so beautiful that it's called the gem of Kazakhstan or Kazakhstan Switzerland. There are a lot of markets in Astana. The most popular is our Tom market lying in the center of the old city. You can find everything ranging from shoes and clothes to fruits and vegetables there. Local residents like Eurasia Market too. A trade fair is held here at weekends. You can buy fresh fruits, vegetables, meat and dairy products at the fair. In addition, there is Kog Bazaar having the same name as Almaty Zilioni Bazaar or Green Market. Once it was the only market in the city, it is sold at Alem Market. It's one of the largest markets in the capital. Hello everyone, my name is Konstantin. I travel around Kazakhstan looking for unique recipes. Now I'm due north of Astana near Burabai village where I found this wonderful birch grove. I've decided to make a unique dish typical of Central Asia. It is also made in Mongolia and it's even said that Chengiz Khan cooked it too. I think that nomads could devise such a recipe because it's made with meat, onion, spices, and you don't need to use many vegetables to make it. Besides, we'll need some stones. We have to wash them properly in advance and put into cold water. This dish is made with mutton and cooked in large cooking pot over stones. I call this dish meat Borabai style. We use fresh mutton to make this dish. We should wash it in advance too. We're chopping it into pieces which are about one centimeter wide. We also need a lot of onions. I have mutton fillet, but you can use beef too. However, if you use mutton, the dish will be tastier. Since we are outdoors, there are various insects here, which is why we should cover the meat before putting it aside. We need some tuya twigs too. We're going to use them to make marinade for the meat. 
We are grinding the Tuya twigs together with salt. We're grinding them until they produce some juice. Okay, now we're rubbing the meat with these twigs. We're rubbing them thoroughly to coat them with moisture. Now we can put it aside and start making a fire. We also need some stones for this dish. It's better to use flat stones. Of course, we need to wash them thoroughly and put into cold water. What do we need the stones for? First, we can use it as pressure and we're going to do it right now. Second, when being cooked in a large cooking pot, the stones squeeze juice from meat and increase the temperature in the cooking pot. As a result, we have a dish which can be called fried, boiled or stewed because it's something in between and its taste is really unique. Okay, now we're peeling onions. You can chop the onions into quite thick pieces because it takes meat about two hours to be done. If you cut the onions thinly, it will dissolve during cooking. We need a lot of onions, about 10 to be exact. Those who don't like gravy can remove the onion later, but those who like onion gravy like I do will enjoy the taste of this dish to a great extent. While the meat is being marinated, I'm going to build the fire. Although I've told you everything about this recipe, I forgot about the most important thing, which is gathering flat stones near the lake. What have I come back here for? I need to take the tail fat, which I need to grease the cooking pot bottom with when heating it. After that, we can put the first layer of stones into the cooking pot after smearing them with sunflower oil. I'm pouring some oil into the bowl and going to the large cooking pot. You can ask why I should grease the cooking pot with tail fat if the meat is cooked over stones. I'll explain why. The point is that after I grease the cooking pot with the tail fat, it will absorb the grease and smell of the tail fat. The dropping liquid will absorb the tail fat grease too. Finally, the meat will absorb it all. Okay. I want to give you a piece of advice. You should take a few pieces of the tail fat and put them between pieces of meat. The method of cooking meat over stones is unique, so watch attentively. Ко 
You need to coat the stones with oil and place them into the large cooking pot. Nobody cooks at so high temperature in a large cooking pot because everything can burn. Thus, first I'll coat the stones with oil and put them into the cooking pot. When they are hot, I'll turn down the fire. As you remember, we marinated the meat in Tuya. To make this marinade, you don't need any special spices. All you need is Tuya and some salt. The nature itself helps us. Well, everything is ready and we can put the meat and onions into the large cooking pot. We are spreading the onions evenly. It's impossible to add too much onion to this dish. The onions will make the meat juicy and tasty, prevented from burning on the stones. Excellent! Now we're spreading the meat evenly. What I like about this region is its delicious mutton. The north has always been famous for large meaty sheep. The distinguishing feature of Borabai sheep is their tail fat, and we've used it to make this dish. Now we can salt the meat. As for me, I've prepared some salt, garlic and paprika. You can do the same if you like this. Now we're ready one more onion layer. Thanks to this, the meat will be juicy and have unique taste. Now we should put more stones. We're putting another layer of stones after coating them in oil. We are putting them near the sides. You may ask why I like cooking mutton over stones. Well, stones provide good pressure and increase the temperature in the large cooking pot, and we can't say exactly if the meat boils, fries or stews. Its taste is unique because various kinds of cooking are combined. We are putting them evenly. Now you understand why it's better to use flat stones. When I cook meat over stones for my friends, everyone jokes that even stones become juicy and tasty. Well, I've already introduced the classic recipe to you. In addition, you can garnish meat Burabai style with special spices I personally add to this dish. There are capsicums, three of them will be enough, and garlic. It's better to slice off the end of the garlic like this, so that it could produce juice and give it to the meat. We are peeling it a little. The capsicums and garlic are prepared. 
we're putting the garlic here and we can dip it. We can also add some small cloves. Now we're putting the capsicums. Now let's pour a little water here. Finally, we're adding a little tail fat. Let's close the lid and leave it to stew for about an hour and a half or two hours. Voila. Mutton cooked in large cooking pot on stones. Wash stones properly, clean them and put into cold water. Chop the meat and rub it with tuya twigs ground together with salt. Add a little onion, spices and leave to marinate under pressure. You can use the very stones for it. Make a fire and place the large cooking pot over it. You should heat the cooking pot properly and grease it with tail fat. Put the stones on the cooking pot bottom. Put onion on them, then do meat and more onion on the top of the meat. Cover everything with stones. If necessary, repeat this again. If the mutton isn't very fatty, you can put small pieces of tail fat between the pieces of meat. Cook for about two hours. To have a harmonious dust arkan, I need to make a salad. I'm going to make it with mushrooms. As you know, central Kazakhstan is famous for its milk agarics and penny buns. Thus, a lot of mushroom hunters arrive here to pick mushrooms. However, I don't know where mushrooms grow here, which is why I bought pickled mushrooms at a market. If the mushrooms are too salty, you can soak them in cold water. These mushrooms don't contain much salt, so I can use them to make this salad. We also need some fresh sour cream and a half of a sliced onion. This is a red onion. I like its taste more. We're peeling it. Although mushrooms are a separate hors d'oeuvre, you should try a mushroom salad. We need a half of an onion, which we should slice. Excellent! We're putting the mushrooms into the bowl. Now let's add the sour cream and stir. Since I'm cooking outdoors, my recipes are easy to make. You can add some black pepper to taste to this salad. Okay. I like to pepper everything, so this pepper is a good addition to my salad. Well, this sound is ready. Now we should wait till the meat is done. Wonderful! Pickled milk agarics. Wash the milk agarics thoroughly. If the mushrooms are too salty, soak them in cold water for 20 minutes. Slice the milk agarics and onion and add high-fat sour cream. Stir it properly and add black pepper to taste.
I like traveling around Kazakhstan so much. I discover new dishes in every region. Travel around Kazakhstan and cook together with me. Bon appétit.